few months ago, I helped one of my consulting clients grow their e-commerce business from $3 million to $18 million. In this video, I'm going to show you one of the very, very simple strategies I put in place that facilitated that outstanding growth. Now, if you like this kind of information, where I'm helping you build your own e-commerce business right here in Australia, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. That way, I'll know you want more information like this. And also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel because we post brand new money-making information each and every day. If you've got a question for me, about anything at all, comment below and I'll answer it for you personally. With that being said, let's get into it. We've got a client who sells organic beverages, kombucha, bloody bloody blah, all Australian made, bloody bloody blah, they sound awesome. Would this be a good place to sell organic beverages on Amazon? So let's bring up their website first. Here's their website. Pretty sexy website. Anyway, so pretty cool website. Let's call it a cool website instead of a sexy one. So I've actually just recently been through this with one of my clients. Uh, when they first arrived with me to help get my help, they were at, give or take, about $3 million a year, something like that, Aussie dollars, Aussie company. And um, they were selling in the supplement space, which is a space I really, really like for obvious reasons, which I'll also explain why. And I took them over a period of a few years to, it was just under 18 million in sales, not in profit, in sales, and then helped them to exit at 43 and a bit million um, to an aggregator. So they were pretty pleased. And so what I do with most of my e-commerce clients and indeed, what I do with my businesses as well, is I kind of go through a little bit of a process to figure out the best way of growing a business. So let's kind of look at that for this business, okay? So kombucha, kombucha, cool thing. I drink heaps of it. It's a consumable product, which means that you buy the stuff and then hopefully drink it, even more hopefully like it, and therefore um, buy the stuff again. So it's consumable, okay? So consumable products allows us to approach the marketing and business side of things in a much, much different way. Because um, instead of just looking at a single sale for our customers, we can look at something much more interested, much more interesting called lifetime value, which is the amount of money that a customer will make for you or spend with you over the life that they're with your business and doing business with your business, okay? So an example of that is uh, Starbucks. I've actually got Starbucks up here. That's Starbucks, which sells coffees that are, what, four bucks a pop, something like that. I've, I haven't drank a Starbucks in friggin' ages, but... I assume they're about four or five bucks. I don't know for sure, but let's just say they are. So um, if, they, if that's all they sold, though, one time they sold you a coffee and that was it at four bucks, then it wouldn't be much of a business. It'd be a pretty shitty business, actually. Um, but that's not what they do. They sell you a coffee once and then they go on to sell you many, many more coffees after that. And that is why the market cap of Starbucks is 103 billion dollars just as a little game um what do you think is the amount of money in dollars that a starbucks customer spends over the life of their doing business with starbucks what would you say it is like a hundred bucks 500 bucks a thousand like where do you reckon it is what do you reckon the average starbucks customer spends with Starbucks over their life? I'd be interested to kind of see what you would guess that is. Uh, like a dog, says Tony, you know it. 6,000, 5,000, says Ronnie. James says 10K, 20K, says Mike. Yeah, their coffee's shit ass. I don't like it either. Uh, six to 10, 4,000, 10K, says Tony. Uh, you will be, I believe, surprised to hear that the actual figure is 14,000 US dollars. So think about that for a second. 
Uh, and then you can start thinking about the way that they can handle their business and what that gives them the ability to do. So if you know that about your customers, that the average Starbucks customer spends $14,000 over their life, well, it means you approach that customer in a much, much different fashion. And I'm going to get to the answer to this question. I'm just building some infrastructure for it, okay? So what does that mean for us? Well, let's say a Starbucks coffee is um, $4, just for ease of maths, and every coffee that gets sold, we make a dollar, meaning 25% um, uh, margins, meaning that on that $14,000, you Starbucks makes three and a half thousand dollars, 25% of 14,000, three and a half thousand. And so it, it gives them a much bigger marketing budget, cash flow allowing, of course, to go after customers. Okay. Which is interesting because now let's bring that back to this particular business and a way of actually building this business and growing this business. So if this was my consulting clients, if these were my consulting clients, what I would want to know is how much does a customer spend with you on average over their life? Now, if they don't know that, that's actually brilliant because you get to look like a complete rock star by telling them what I've just told you about why that's so important and then helping them to figure it out. So if they don't know that, help them to figure it out. Hopefully they've got customer records where they can work that shit out. If they don't have customer records, holy crap, you can make this business millions of dollars just by putting some good systems in place to get customers to work out lifetime value. Let's suppose they do that. So now what you th start thinking about is, well, given that my lifetime value of my customers is X and given my cash flow situation is why? How much money can I afford to spend to acquire a new customer? So how much money can Starbucks afford to spend to acquire a new customer, given that each customer they acquire over the fullness of their life with the business is worth three and a half thousand dollars, okay, in profit to them. And so it changes the way you think about things. So now let's bring this back to Amazon. Funny thing about Amazon, I truly believe this, is that Amazon's now at the point where pretty much anything will sell on Amazon. It's at the point now where sufficient number that's got enough market dominance that you could pretty much sell anything on Amazon, legal legalities permitting, of course, okay? So it's not really a question of if, if you can, sell on Amazon. It's more a case of if you should sell on Amazon, okay? And the should part comes down to, if I sell on Amazon, will I make any frigging money? Because that's obviously important, yeah? Will I make any money if I sell on Amazon, given that Amazon takes its pound of flesh in terms of commissions and things like that? So, now, with this new understanding about consumables having lifetime value, it allows us to look at Amazon not as a distribution channel where we're getting the product into the hands of our customers. Instead, what we can now look at it as is as a marketing channel for acquiring new customers. Very different understanding about the way that we use Amazon. So, I did a quick little bit of research on merchant words, <clears throat> and this is just for the search term kombucha in Australia. And you can see, actually, there's actually quite a lot of search. Pretty frigging sexy. 22,000 searches per month. Pretty sexy. Some of those are kits and things like that, of course. But still, there's a, enough search there to make it inter interesting, yeah? So now, if this was my client, what I would be getting them to do is I would put them onto Amazon. I would not do FBA because what I would be wanting to get is all of the customer data so I can add it to my customer data. And as soon as I acquire a customer from Amazon, I would look to move them immediately off of Amazon and go direct to them 
so I could save my Amazon commission and referral fee. Okay, that's what I would look to do if this was my consulting client. That's how I would approach it. Uh, anything else I want to say about that? I don't think so. That's a really solid strategy for those kind of consumable businesses. Um, some customers want to stay on Amazon. Amazon's got subscribe and save, which is fantastic. That's great. Those customers that you can take off of Amazon, which are consumable customers where they repeat purchase, you absolutely should. Once you get them off, your prospects will increase, but you use Amazon not as a distribution channel, but as a marketing channel. Hi, this is Neil from the Aussie Online Entrepreneurs. We are the fastest growing e-commerce community right here in Australia. Two and a half thousand members and growing with sales, by the way, of over 50 million dollars. If you'd like to find out more about what we do and of course to come and join us, get yourself off to www.aussieonlineentrepreneurs.com.au. That link is in the below in the description and I will see you on the inside.